All right, welcome to the CCNA Data Center presentation on virtual port channels. What we're going to do in this section is we're going to try to understand what virtual port channels are, how they work, and what we need to kind of verify and ensure they're working trouble per, uh, perfectly, as well as trying to maybe do some troubleshooting. Um, so it's very, these are some of the objectives that we need for CCNA data, data Center. So let's get started. The first thing we really need to look at is when we start looking at spanning tree. Spanning tree has been around a long time and it really was designed to solve a particular problem. The particular problem, of course, is when we had lots of switches and we had a loop. But what about just two switches? Well, the two switches, if I have a link here, all is well and good, life is happy, data is chugging along that single path. But when I add a second link in here, I now have the possibility that I could send a frame, it could start off up here, and go, come back down here like a broadcast frame, and it could go around and around and around and around, creating a broadcast storm. So the solution for spanning tree was pretty straightforward. When spanning tree would detect a loop, it would go ahead and would stop one of them from being able to send. It would put one into blocking. Okay. And so we'd have one link that was functional, and the other link which was not functional. This is active standby active standby. If the active would fail, the standby could take over. So it gave us fault tolerance, but didn't give us any load balancing. It didn't give us that active, active thing that we really want in our data center. And so the solution to this was something called port channel. Now port channels were defined between two switches. I could have one switch here, another switch here, put some links between them. And what port channel did was pretty clever. Port channel logically bonded these put together. Sometimes called bonding, sometimes called ether channel. And what port channel allowed me to do is between two switches is I could have an active, active scenario. And I could send some traffic over one link, some traffic over the other link. So I get more bandwidth. And I could do different types of load balancing. Maybe I could do based on MAC address or IP address or TCP port, but it let me do some load balancing and really gave me a active, active. So now I doubled my bandwidth and I could even con continue to increase my bandwidth by adding more links to this port channel. Okay. So port channels were very cool. Port channels are used extensively, almost everywhere. We use port channels constantly because they give us not only that fault tolerance that we like, but it also gives us an active, active scenario so that we're low bouncing traffic across multiple paths. Now, when we look at port channels, a few characteristics, all right? I have some different names here, all right, but really they let us take multiple links, bond them. They're fundamentally designed to go from one switch to one other switch, and it allows me to be active, active instead of active standby. Well, let's up the stakes a little bit and come into a three switch problem. So now let's consider that we have three switches one, two, and three switches, all right. Well, three switches, if I go ahead and basically down here, let's say these are my clients, right? And uh, connecting way up here to my core or whatever. Well, if I started connecting these guys together, all right, it's obvious that I'm gonna start having some looping issues. Or round and round and round she goes, where she stops, nobody knows. And so spanning tree could come in here and shut down one of these links. But once again, that gives me a active and a passive. All right, an active and a standby. Now you can do clever things. We do it on a per VLAN, so some VLANs go this way, some VLANs go other way. But there is a better way to fix this problem, and this is what we use extensively in our Nexus environment, and this is our port channels. So what port channels do, fundamentally, is well, they lie. That's uh, the biggest thing that they do. <laughs> and let's really show what I mean. So up here I have two northbound switches. And down here, I have a so southbound switch, all right? And so we're going to connect these together. Now, we know that VPC, virtual port channel, is a version of port channel, but port channel is defined specifically for from one switch to one switch. So what we do in this scenario is we do something kind of special. We set up some special links between these two guys, all right? And we make them become something very special. What they're going to become for us, let me draw a couple of the links in here. We what these guys are going to become, these two switches up top, they're going to become something very special. They're going to become something called VPC peers. So these two switches up here, my dots aren't so great. 
get the idea. All right, these are going to become VPC peers. All right, and what VPC peers do, they have a special link, they have a special configuration, a domain ID, all kinds of other special stuff. But these two VPC peers, what they do fundamentally is they lie to the southbound switch. They pretend to be one logical switch. So from this southbound switch down here, let's go ahead and give this switch a number. We'll call them switch number three, and we'll call them switch number one and two, just so we can reference them. Switch three, when he looks northbound and he, over these two links that he has, he does not see two separate switches. He sees one logical switches. Those two switches pretend to be one logical switch, all right? And so what I can do is these guys we said are already set up as VPC peers, switch one and two are VPC peers, right? And down here on switch three, it's kind of interesting. It's like, well, I have to configure VPC on switch one and two. Yes. On switch three, you don't have to configure VPC. What you have to configure is plain old port channel because he really doesn't know that there's two separate switches. He thinks it's just one switch and I just do port channel. So down here, this guy, switch three, he's just doing plain old port channel. These guys, switch one and two, are doing VPC, virtual port channel. So virtual port channel is a very common topology. We see this used extensively, all right? And so, boom. All right. And a more common topology I might have is I might have multiple switches connecting up into this. So let's go ahead and let's switch four over here. And switch four. Connect to these guys, connect to these guys. And he could also be in two port channel. So in our data center type topology, like the typical topology for CCNA data center, switch four and switch three, those might be UCS fabric interconnects connecting northbound. So these might be UCS fabric interconnects, or whatever kind of switches, <laughs> connecting northbound up to some 5500s or some 5600 uh, Nexus switches up here. And so that's kind of a typical topology. So what it gives me a lot of flexibility, it gives me low balancing. Well, we'll talk, we can do low balancing. We'll talk about some different ways we can do it, but like I said, based on IP address, source port, destination port, source MAC, destination MAC. But virtual port channels are very powerful, very resilient. So if switch one or two goes down, the only thing that will happen is our total amount of bandwidth will, will be reduced. Well, when they're both up, we're low balancing across the VPC peers. So that fundamentally is virtual port channel. Now there's some terms that are kind of involved here. All right. I said basically we're going to go ahead, we get rid of the STP issues, we're able to do active, active, and in the event of a failure, boom, we just take the other path. So this stuff is very, very cool with our VPC. But let's take a look at some of the terminology. We have VPC peers. All right. So in this, in our topology here, we have two peers. This is one of our peers. This is another one of our peers. All right. Member ports connect southbound down. So down here we see our member ports. Okay. The guy down the bottom there, he's doing plain old port channel. Okay. And then our VPC peer link and a keep alive link. A peer link is how we're going to synchronize our data and the keep alive link is a little heartbeat to make sure we stay alive. So those are our primary components. We have our member, member ports connect southbound. Our peer links are how we go ahead and we synchronize at very high speed. And then our keep alive just a little heartbeat link. So this could even be something like our um, management port or something. And so this is our VPC. What we need to know, make sure we know, is that the VPC peer link, this is what creates the illusion of a single control panel, a single control plane, which is very cool stuff for us. Okay. So we talked about this. One thing you need to know is it's going to low balance these on a per flow basis. So in other words, if all your links are one gig links, all right, and you have a ton, a single flow with, that wants to do three gigs, it can't because it's going to be on a low balance on a per flow basis. It is not chopping up a single flow and spraying it across those links. All right, it is going on a per flow. And like I said, it can be based on VLAN information, MAC, IP, TCP port. All right, for layer three, all right, we default uh, the source destination for layer three uh, for IP, IP4, IPv6, and then source destination. MAC address for non-IP traffic. So those are the defaults, but we can go ahead and we can configure how we want to configure load balancing. So just be aware, it does our different types of load balancing. A lot of people like to do it based on TCP ports, give a little more equal cost load balancing, but it's up to you which way you actually want to do your load balancing. So what do we do? Well, the first thing, like anything else on Nexus, the feature is not enabled by default. 
So I do the feature VPC command that turns on the VPC process so it's running. We configure a VPC domain and we'll give it an ID number, one, two, three, so that if we have multiple pairs of these running on the same segment, they're isolated from each other based on that domain. We specify our Keep Alive link, we create the peer link, and then we go ahead and we put the member ports in to the VPC. All right? And then we want to make sure, one of the things that has to happen, and just beware, that we have to have some type of configuration has to be consistent between the two peers. And there are some advanced ways we can do that. It'll be on the scope for CCNA DC, but just be aware they have to have kind of configuration has to be very similar and basically have the same type of configuration for this too. So I'd mentioned this VPC domain ID that uniquely identifies it. Well, this is the one of the things that you can verify. The show VPC command, the show VPC command will let you see your domain ID. All right, so we need to know the show VPC command. We also should know another command that's useful, and that's show VPC peer keep alive. The show VPC peer keep alive is going to allow me to see how long my peer has been alive. So in this case, this peer has been alive for, what's that, like 4 million seconds or something? All right, and so you can see, if I say, oh, how long has this link been up? How long has that peer been alive? I can use the show VPC peer keep alive. We'll look at one last command. If I want to take a look and see the roles or say the MAC address for the system, all right, so it has a system MAC address that's used when we become peers. In this case, I can see his role is secondary and his system MAC address. So it lets me see some of the different information. Now, this is just a scattering of the commands that you need to know for VPC, but just kind of be aware there's a lot of different VPC commands, but fundamentally, <coughs> the biggest thing about VPC, of course, is VPC is awesome, and you're going to see it in most of your design topologies. If you're looking at FlexPod, you're looking at VBlock, you're designing your own, you're going to see coming doing a lot of VPC, <coughs> all right? And I do a lot of UCS, and coming out of my UCS, out of my Fabric Interconnect, we're always VPC and up to our Nexus switches. There are other technologies that are similar to VPC. There's something called VSS, HP has their own, and some other companies have their own flavor of this, allowing you to go ahead and low bounce from one switch to multiple switches. But that's it about for VPC. Thank you so much, and I hope this has been helpful to you.